All right. Hello and welcome to an Ember Builds Refresh. So uh, it's been a while since we have talked about Ember and it's not so much that she has changed more so than she has some new tools to play with, albeit not many, but still we need to talk about them and just kind of the current place where Ember is. Uh, so for that, let's just immediately get started because we have a bit to go over. So first and foremost, in terms of the build, this is what we're working with. This is very similar to what we have run in the past with some very notable additions, that being Archon Vitality, which is, of course, very important for Ember, uh, as this doubles the heat procs that she applies with every single one of her skills. So you're going to want that. Basically, in any case where you have an ability that is applying a heat proc, Archon Vitality is going to do more to add damage to that than most any amount of strength is going to. You have to add an inordinately large amount of strength in order to make it better than Archon Vitality. And if you are already adding strength and you have room for Archon Vitality, it gets exponentially better from there. So on any Heat Warframe, so Ember of course, uh, and like Thermal Sunder and so on and so forth, you're pretty much gonna wanna run Archon Vitality because it is a huge damage increase. And bonus, you get a bunch of health out of the deal. Other than that, we have shifted some things around in this build. We're no longer running Exothermic, as I don't think it's necessary uh, with the kind of better energy economy we have with Xmas now. Uh, the Xmas offering a good chunk of energy has been very nice. You do still still need to run like at least a Fleeting Expertise worth because that plus 60% is really necessary for her Inferno because this ability is so, so energy hungry. It is four energy per enemy. And in Steel Path, enemy density... Uh, that is still an absolute ton of energy, which is why we are also running Primed Flow, and we still need Arcane Energize most of the time if we're trying to hit like extremely, extremely large groups, especially if we're going to need to cast R4 more than once. It is worth noting that there is another variation of how you can build Ember, which is by removing Inferno uh, and just using Immolation plus Fire Blast and then using her one with its augment. Uh, and usually you put Roar or Nourish here, turning Ember into like a Heat Weapons platform. In my opinion, if you're going to build Ember that way, you should play a different Warframe instead. Um, but you can also build her that way. In this case, we are focusing on her unique abilities like Inferno um, and like her Immolation and such. And then supporting that by removing her 1, which is not very synergistic with her kit, and adding Roar because Roar increases the damage that we're going to be doing with Inferno. So with that, in terms of uh, our augments here or well our arcanes rather uh, we have molt augmented uh which is going to be giving us a free 60 percent strength putting us up to a good chunk over 200 which is going to be more than enough for pretty much any level of content that you're like to take ember to uh we're also running growing power for another a little boost to strength there uh, and also in terms of our exilus slot you can run primed sure footed here but in general i really don't think that ember needs it uh, but it is something you could choose to run here if you find that you're being knocked down a lot. For me personally, I don't find that Ember is really in that position very often. Usually she is the one doing the knocking down. Uh, and then in terms of other survivability and uh, power set of things, we just you know, have some strength, from will intensify. Uh, we have a good chunk of range so that we can hit a large amount of enemies with all of our abilities. Uh, a little bit of duration to uh, give us you know, the anti-negative from the fleeting so that our roar still lasts like a good 30 seconds. Um, and that's pretty much what we're rolling with. Adaptation is going to be a huge amount of survivability when combined uh, with Immolation because that's going to give us 99% damage reduction in most cases, uh, which means we're going to be well over 100,000 EHP most of the time. Um, not in all cases, but most of the time. And that kind of rounds us out to what Ember can do with her kit. You're going to be spamming Inferno, dropping fireballs on enemies, using your three as much as you can to strip armor, Unfortunately, Fire Blast actually has a bunch of enemies that it can't strip the armor of, most notably being Acolytes. Acolytes will retain all of their armor, even if you have a max power Fire Blast, for whatever reason, which is super annoying that this doesn't work on every enemy, because it is already limited in a number of other ways. Um, but yeah, Ember is all right. She is okay. And I really wish that they would change some things about her, because as you can see, if we do our usual level 200... Uh, heavy Gunner Test, we can throw a Roar on and throw the 4 down. You see this will crowd control them pretty well by lighting them on fire. You can see the damage is not very good, and we have to wait for that meter in the bottom right to hit a nice heavy level before we can actually strip the armor off these enemies. But once we get to the point where we can do that, they all die pretty fast. Like, pretty, pretty quickly they die once you actually have the armor off of them, which is good. And then, of course, once you have built up kind of a bit of gain, you can keep casting 3 and keep stripping armor off enemies. But really... My uh, my big gripe with Ember's kit 
comes from her having negatives on her abilities at all. Because the big thing with her too is you'll see in the bottom right that it is draining energy at not too crazy a rate, and that is due to our very high efficiency. Um, but that is, you know, continuing to get worse as we don't use our three and becomes quite unmanageable at any kind of lower efficiency. And it's a bit odd that Ember has these downsides. Like a lot of other Warframes just don't have downsides. And uh, Ember gets a huge energy drain whenever she's got good survivability for too long. And she also has to spend that meter to be able to strip armor. And she can't like, you know, super quickly do that multiple times in a row. Which is mystifying. Uh, with the current state of the game, I really hope at some point Ember gets a bit of a power-up. Because her 4, as you saw, does negligible to no damage to those level 200 enemies. Even though Heat has like an armor stripping property to it. Um, it still does like next to nothing against enemies that have not been armor stripped. Uh, which is very unfortunate, even especially considering that Ember's passive adds a ton of strength to her just kind of through that. Uh, and that's with Roar added to it as well, which is double dipping on how much damage it is letting you deal. So Ember's in like a bit of a weird place where really you just got to invert all the flips on, hey, if you build up heat, make her stronger. And that could probably fix all of the problems that she has keeping up with other Warframes. Uh, but overall, she's pretty good. It's not like she's not going to be able to hold her own in Sealed Path. It's just against enemies like Eximus, status immune enemies, enemies that aren't stripped by her armor. Usually you're just going to need to bring a decent gun to back her up, uh, like the boar in Karnan, which is what I've chosen to go with here. But yeah, in general, she's pretty good, but like, you know, not not blowing anybody away in 2024. Uh, so yeah, let's jump into the steel path and um, kill some dudes, light some stuff on fire. All right, uh, so worth noting off the rip here as we get into this run... Um, I have removed the, the the wings ephemera that I use on her to kind of reduce some visual clutter on this run. Uh, as I know that sometimes kind of gets in the way of being able to see stuff uh, if you're like looking at numbers on enemies and such like that. Uh, and uh, yeah, so Ember, she's, you know, she is a Warframe. And it's it's just, uh, she is aging. The, the downsides that I noted whenever she got initially reworked, which is that it was weird that she had downsides at all have kind of just like come more to bear recently i suppose i should say um because she just you know the game's content has expanded in a way and uh, basically frames kind of have gotten stronger like we we see a lot of warframes that are like you know you don't think of as particularly strong even but like Warframes come out and they like, don't have a downside. Like, obviously, the, the most recent suggestion, and of course my last video, is Calervo, where Calervo is all upsides. He is a phenomenal Warframe uh, that has, like, not an ability that I have a pro problem with at, like, the current moment. Other than his one, maybe. His, his teleporting can be a little hitchy. But other than things that are literally bugs, it's tough to have a problem with much on him. But in terms of Ember, she, for whatever reason, you know, c comparing her to, like, let's let's say Warframes that are a bit more comparable. Like, obviously, Calervo's brand new. Brand new Warframe. He gets the brand new uh, coat of paint. But other Warframes that are, like, of a similar age as Ember, such as, let's, let's say, Saren, just have limitless godlike powers. And then, you know, you have Ember, who, like, I need to shoot the Overguard off this guy and do a finisher, right? Which is just a bit of a weird, uh, bit of a weird way for things to be. And obviously, it's not that like Ember doesn't work or something, but she is doing the worst version of what a lot of other frames are able to do. Just considering like having to wait and not having like instant armor stripping, having lower damage that's dependent almost entirely on status and stuff like that. I know I'm being like, mm, I'm probably being too negative uh on ember but that is because i have been like you know working on the tier list and getting ready for the tier list so you're, you're getting a lot of the opinions on where ember is early here i think um she really is a fine warframe though like she's like not got anything that's like super bad for her obviously any warframe that's got you know i can multiply my ehp by a hundred uh between my defensive skill and adaptation there's stuff going on there. Like, you're very, very survivable as Ember. She doesn't really have many issues staying alive. 
between the inherent CC from lighting enemies on fire um, and adaptation and her two. Usually it's not very problematic. And then the other things that she has going on, like energy wise, she can have problems, but mostly that doesn't happen in seal path. It only really happens whenever you start like using your ability without doing the armor strip. And then you run out of energy hilariously quickly and it's not great. Uh, also at the three minute mark, little kill rate report here, 235. Uh, She's very tile dependent because uh, her four has like soft line of sight on a lot of objects, but not all. But her three has a hard line of sight check on most things. Uh, so it's a it's a bit tough to get the enemy's armor stripped and hit by her four. I would really, really hope that like, you know, at some point maybe her three is not line of sight because it, it does almost no damage. It's really just there to try and armor strip some guys. And it also, like, very heavily slows them down on getting to you as long as they're not CC immune. Uh, so, you know, it's just, it has all of the, uh, it has all the downsides and more of something like pillage. Though I suppose it doesn't have the high strength requirement, though that wouldn't actually be a problem. Um, but just it doesn't, you know, give you extra shields and it doesn't, you know, come online at the very beginning of the mission and eh, so on and so forth. But yeah, I mean, these are just like, I'm just talking about the kinds of things I think about when like evaluating abilities at this point, just because that's what I've been doing. Um, but yeah, she is super fine. You'll be able to see here, uh, obviously my, where is the boy at? There he is. He's put the bubble on me. You, you see he's affected by like the four and the three and such, but the three doesn't armor strip him. The damage on, like, the Acolytes is actually fine enough that you can totally just, like, kill them by, like, running around and, like, throwing your four on, especially if you actually keep Roar on. Um, it's, like, not a huge problem to burn them down, especially at, like, the earlier Steel Path levels. So she doesn't really have an issue there, but it is, again, like, kind of nonsense that her armor strip doesn't work on them. Because, uh, like, if it did work on them, she would be, like, a really solid, uh, you know, Acolyte killer. But instead, it's like she's just kind of mediocre and slow at it for kind of no reason. Which is unfortunate. Oh, yeah. You know what? A thing I did not talk about, actually, uh, because it kind of doesn't matter for her because there's not really stats that she particularly needs that she's not getting for mods is uh, Archon Shards. Um, Archon Shards on her. I just have two casting speed shards. You could add more duration for just like comfort levels of recasting roar and maybe a little more efficiency uh, on your two. And like that's fine and dandy. Like that's okay and won't won't really come up very much. You could also add more strength. But again, you kind of just have to do the armor strip and more strength isn't actually going to do much for you because you get so much strength just from the enemies that are on fire around you from her passive that it's like... You know, it's just not going to make much difference. So in terms of things to add to her, there's not a whole lot of places to go unless you are doing like the weapons platform version of Ember, um, which we talked about it a little bit during like the, like me talking about like the builds, but the weapons platform version of Ember, there's no reason to play that. Um, you can do it. And like, that's like the long and the short of it. It's a thing you can do. Uh, I will say it is objectively better than playing her this way. But it's a way where there's objectively better Warframes to be playing if you were to try and play her that way. So unless you just like how Ember looks um, and want to shoot the gun, like the, the function of like incarnate weapons and guns being so good, it makes it so that if you were to throw two Corrosion Green Shards on her and throw Nourish on her four, run Precision Intensify on her one augment, you get to add Eat Heat, Viral, uh, Build Corrosion, and like, you know, just do that nonsense on your guns and then have decent survivability with your two uh, probably still plus adaptation and this is all stuff that you can do but begs the question why am i not revenant why am i not x y and z other warframe that just does the weapons platform thing better um and that's just that's just usually how that one goes which is which is why i chose not to showcase that build it's a build that's not hard to put together uh, those those builds look pretty much the same on all the Warframes that tend to use them, where that's like their main gameplay style, like Neja and all that. Um, so I didn't think it was particularly worth showing off, more so worth just talking about. But it is, it is a thing to do that will generally perform better than uh, what I am showing here. But this is like, you know, using her, her DPS ability, quote unquote, 
uh, to actually, like, you know, make it clear content and work. You know, raining the meteors down is fun and feels good to do. They are just a little underwhelming whenever our other options are to, like, fire the bubonic plague at a nation from the end of a gun. So, you know. She's, she's just a Warframe that's, like, it's been a little while since she's seen a touch-up, I think, is really the, the main thing. And as I said before, you could, like, pretty easily just remove the downs, uh, with the weird downsides she has for kind of no reason. Uh, and, like, replace that with upsides. And then suddenly she'd be, like, insanely better. Like, making it so, like, instead of, like, say, for example, instead of strength, if she got, like, a multiplier. Oh, they took one of my guns. Well, that's unfortunate. I'm gonna throw the Zorus once. Because this is, like, once again, this is an enemy. She can armor strip these guys only once they've dropped their thing, though. If they haven't, if they haven't dropped that, then you can't do it. Uh, but yeah, it's a bit, it's a bit weird for, for Ember, just in her, her current state, because it's been, you know, multiple years since she's changed, and the, the game has, has changed some things about itself, including the dev team, uh, since her rework was done. And I, I think that, like, if we got, you know, a current day touch-up pass on her, it would probably go go pretty wild with easy improvements that she could see. But yeah. She's not bad, though. Totally, like, I think she's, like, a, a middle-of-the-road type frame. Totally, like, you know, survivable, and she works on most stuff, and she's got the meteors, and she can be built a couple of different ways. So, like, it's not exactly doom and gloom, but... Like I said, I've been doing the tier list, so I've been looking at the best of the best and comparing it to everyone else. So, kind of makes your makes your opinions a little harsher by necessity. I think I think a couple of months ago, before I started like the serious like testing on uh, all the frames leading up to the tier list, I probably would have been a little softer on it. But that has to stop whenever you're tier listing things. It's just how it works. It's just the necessities of the way that it's done. Yeah, you can see me getting hit by, like, the hard line of sight on her four there. Finally, we are getting our second Acolyte. Also, as is probably very obvious, uh, she gets shut down the same way as everyone else does on, like, as violence. She doesn't have any, like, particular advantages against, like, him showing up or anything of that nature. Where did, where was my boar stolen? Right here? There it is. There you go. He's dead now. But yeah, that's uh, that's what that's what's going on with Ember. She's fine. All the way down. I think it's all the way down to get out of here. Uh, at markers, tell me your secrets. Yeah, she's she's absolutely, uh, absolutely all right. And you know that's to be expected. There has to be some middle of the pack Warframes. But, uh, I don't... It might just be that I also like Ember. Like, I like, you know, her... Just, like, the theme of light everything on fire rules. So, I personally would prefer for her to be a little more competitive with some of the better Warframes. But, you know, she's fine as she stands. We're at, what, like, 876? I haven't really killed anything for 10 minutes. So, let... Or for a one minute. So, you know, it's an okay, it's an okay kill rate. It's fine. She's all right. She's fine. Hopefully she gets a pass at some point to be a little bit better. But she's a totally serviceable, enjoyable enough Warframe. Not bad. All right. Thanks for watching, everyone. And, of course, as usual, thanks very much to the patrons for supporting the channel, uh, especially the $10 patrons, Alex Barnum, Andrew, Angel SBM, Arbiter Daydream, Benuvin, uh, Blotomatic, Brandon Coggin, Brutus Salazar, Cano Lathra, uh, Dylan Dworski, Thrain, Lafon, James Hartshorn, uh, GC4 Science, John Lobdell, Joshua Adams, Lou Zant, The Gokel, Minty Ginja, Mitchta, Nerve, Ramoxidate, Ruby, Sharp247, Camarillic Wastelander, The Coupon of Death, Homeworm, Victor Palmer, Wife of Wars, Vaudid, and Zerafir. Uh, and of course, thank you very much to all of the $5 and $2 patrons as well. It is much appreciated because I've been asked this a lot. Uh, I am doing the 2024 Warframe tier list, but 
I need to get last year's data from whenever DE releases that, which hopefully happens on the January dev stream. Uh, but that's what's holding that up because, you know, that kind of factors into Warframe's getting S ranks or not. But yeah, that's that's what's going on. Uh, and thanks. Thank you, everybody.